Greetings everyone. Welcome back to my channel. New viewers, do subscribe and watch so that you can stay updated with more videos. Well, today's topic is A.J. Gardiner's non-fictional work, George Bernard Shaw. Well, Alfred George Gardiner, otherwise called as Alpha of the Plough. So, he is an English journalist, editor, and author. He is also a chairman of the National Anti-Sweating League, an advocacy group which campaigned for a minimum wage in industry. Gardiner gained immense popularity as an essayist, and uh, his literary career extends from the Victorian age to the modern age. He writes on trivial matters, and that too, on different perspectives. He points out the follies of the society, and his writings were based on social and moral purposes, and obviously they were reflections on the society. Here, this particular work, non-fictional work, George Bernard Shaw, is actually A.G. Gardiner's reflections and thoughts on George Bernard Shaw. So here, to begin with, uh, Gardiner reminisces Shah's presiding over gathering. So Shah actually plans a lecture without a title, says Gardiner. And when incurred, Shah very calmly has replied that it will be announced at the close. So he wasn't even bothered about the title that he was to speak about. And Shah preferred to answer unreasonable questions. And uh, as A.G. Gardiner recollects, Shah was known for his mocking and insulting jibes at his audience. So here, he elaborates that Shah's speech exposes flashes of wit and treasures of good sense. Shah, a soul in chase. So Shah, according to Gardiner, is like the hurry of the wind, and is as keen as a razor. As he recollects, Shah's mind and body was very much rapid, and Gardiner compares Shah to a hurricane on two legs. Shah's wrath on the jerry-built society. By the way, what do you mean by jerry-built? It is uh, something badly or hastily built with poor quality materials. So here, Shah always showed his wrath on the jerry-built society. For he ridicules the very English society as a jerry-built society. And he whips the English people with his bitter remarks like the sharp stings of a scorpion. And Shah vehemently I mean, publicly criticizes the people and the society through his plays. The severe self-discipline of Shah. So here we could see that through A.G. Gardiner that Shah always has said a big no to meat. Gardiner highlights Shah's strict aversion for meat. Shah would not dine with men who consume meat like savages. So Shah doesn't like people who fuddle or confuse their brains with wine. And he even hates smoking that pollutes the air with filthy smoke. Lady Randolph Churchill, uh, the mother of British Prime Minister Sir Winston Churchill, records Shah's aversion to eat dead animals as he declined to dine with her. So here we could see that Shah always hates to eat meat. Well, Shah against the loathsome or disgusting habits of the society. So uh, Shah's rap over the merciless greed of commerce was exhibited in A.G. Gardner's work because he uh, criticizes the society for being a complete 
waste and disorder everywhere for him religion was an organized hypocrisy and according to him justice was based on revenge and it is labeled as punishment and for shah science was based on vivisection that is practice of operating live animals for scientific experiments so uh, on the other hand he also remarks that empire itself was based on violence so according to shah everything is wrong with the world a reasonable man like shah always wars with the world and he abuses the fashionable audience of the anti sweating meeting so anti sweating uh, campaigns are actually they refer to campaigns uh, uh, for improving the conditions of workers in sweat uh, sweat shops that is uh, uh, manufacturing places characterized by low wages poor working conditions and often child labor so here shark corners the fashionable audience to burn the palaces of fashion and commerce instead of gathering for amusement shah's unraveled gift of being unpleasant so here ag gardener exhibits that shah possesses a rare gift of being unpleasant as gardener says we people actually cultivate uh, false polite behaviors whereas Shah has the courage to be unkind and unpleasant to others. Shah doesn't uh, stab people at the back. Shah enjoys giving pain to others for their own good. And uh, Shah never paid a compliment to anyone, right? Shah's frankness. So as A.G. Gardiner reiterates, Shah is too frank that he tears away everything that is fake and false. He confronts us with naked realities, and uh, Shah readily expresses anger or irritation, known for his waspish tongue and his assumption. I mean, Shah's assumption on the English was that they are dull, imaginative, excessively flattering. deceptive and irritatingly self assertive shah and swift so here oh uh, ag gardner makes a mild comparison between shah and swift so uh, shah does not hate men like swift he only scorns at their follies sentimentalities and superstitions shah has no reverence or respect for the reverence of others so according to shah religion is like a fog in the mind because according to him religion blurs the vision of realities and uh, shah doesn't have swift's morbidness morbidness in the sense of uh, abnormal and unhealthy interest in disturbing and unpleasant subjects so swift had a terrible smile that foreshadowed insanity whereas shah had a smile of sardonic sanity sardonic in the sense grimly mocking or cynical and uh, shah's acidic remarks will curl you up as if you were an insect says ag gardener pulling down the wall so here we could see that shah asserts that there is no good from the selfish exclusiveness of an english man shah parallels plato's idea of pulling down the walls as limitations of walls uh, shelters a uh, restricted family feelings harbors awareness selfishness and greed shaw and money so shaw is careless about a beautiful home but he is much bothered or he desires for a beautiful city shaw is indifferent about his wife's diamonds he doesn't bother that but he wishes to see his char woman and the sempstress to be well dressed see if not he would send them to prison according to shah poverty and illness are the only punishable crimes shah asserts that if poor people are given penal servitude i mean penal servitude in the sense imprisonment with hard labor instead of sympathy there would be a change in the society so he 
calls for not sympathizing with the poor. Instead, he says that the poor people should be given penal servitude so that there would, of course, be a change in the society. As Shah says, money is the most important thing in the world. For him, money represents health, strength, honor, generosity, and beauty. So poverty represents illness, weakness, disgrace, meanness, and ugliness. So flee from poverty, which is the root of sin, says Mr. Shah. Shah remains unchanged with riches. So riches poured into him. Shah gained much fame throughout the world, but Shah remains unchanged with all his riches and fame. He is still the gentleman of fortune, living upon his wits, his sword ever in his hand. Shah, a revolutionary. So with the smallest dramatic equipment, with little imagination and a slight instinct for character, Shah had made the contemporary England drama a vehicle of ideas. He propagated truth that is blinded by familiarity and convention. As a playwright with an agenda of preaching, extremely unorthodox sermons. So Shah was a complete revolutionary and he revolutionized the contemporary drama with an agenda of preaching extremely unorthodox sermons. He wasn't bothered about that at, at all. And Shah's view, according to Shah, the sickness of the mind is caused by a false and vicious social system. So he was very much sure about the, that. And Shah, a tonic of his times, right? So Shah was indeed a tonic of his times. He was quite bitter, but still stimulating. He clears the mind of the hypocrites. Shah is admirable in small dose. Shah never agrees with anything or anyone. I mean, no compromise at all. He rests on himself and is self-assertive. So Shah is indeed a tonic of his times, says A.G. Gardiner. So to quote Shah, I am of the opinion that my life belongs to the whole community. And as long as I live it, it is my privilege to do for it whatsoever I can. I want to be thoroughly used up when I die. For the harder I work, the more I live. I rejoice in life for its own sake. Life is no brief candle to me. It is a sort of splendid torch which I have got hold of for the moment. And I want it to burn as brightly as possible before handing it on to future generations. So with this comes the end of the session. So. Thank you for watching. And again, I'm repeating, those who haven't it, subscribe. Do subscribe and you'll be getting more updates on literature and theory as well. So this is Vahida signing off. Mm -hmm.